Hello, welcome to the Pop Off PC Mags video show. We talk about video games, the biggest games, trends, important things going on in the industry, stuff just near and dear to our hearts. I'm Jordan Miner. I'm on the apps and gaming team at PC Mag. Uh, this is a very important episode, not just because it's our first episode here in the new year, but because we have a very special guest. Um, please welcome Shell Ramanan, narrative designer and co-founder of POC and Play. Shell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And happy New Year, seeing as this is your first one of the year. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's been a little bit, uh, you know, PC Mag, we have a lot of tech coverage, so CES, and, you know, also just everything going on in the world. Um, yeah. where, where are you in the world, actually? That was kind of a thing to even getting this, this set up, yeah, to, right. to wrangle that. <laughs> I'm in Malmö in Sweden, which okay. is in the south of Sweden, so practically Denmark. <laughs> so how, how are things... How are things there? Um, I suppose it depends on your perspective. Um, the Swedish approach to the pandemic has been interesting with no masks um, unless you have symptoms and bars and restaurants have been open the entire time. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Some of us wish that there were a little bit more restrictions, but um, yeah, in general, I suppose it's, good mental health wise because we can still go out we're not in the full lockdown that people um in the rest of europe and you know in the us and well everywhere basically everywhere apart from sweden um it's not as restrictive so in that respect you know we've been able to go out and go for walks and things without any restrictions okay um yeah so on down that very uh <laughs> Definitely not the most uplifting. Yeah, that dystopian, that dystopian <laughs> start. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's why we play video games, is to, to right. escape to, to better scenarios sometimes. Um, yeah. so, so just for our viewers, so just, uh, just a, little, a little introduction on yourself. Who are you? What do you do? Um, yeah. Okay, so um, I used to be a video games journalist um, for a really long time. Um, yeah, so I wrote about games. Um, I wrote in The Guardian, um, I did stuff for the BBC. Sometimes I wrote for GameIndustry.com, which is um, a site in the US. And um, I did lots of speaking and events and sort of, um, I suppose my platform was speaking about um, representation of black people and people in color, of people of color in video games um, and just uh, sort of diversity in general um, within games, within the industry itself and in the games that we play, so the stories that we're telling. Um, and then I was, um, I became, I started moving over to game development and uh, I formed a studio called Threefold Games, and we are a tiny um, a sort of micro studio, I suppose you'd call us, because it's just two of us, um, myself and Claire Morewood. And we released our first game um, in July of last year, and it's called Before I Forget. And um, it's about an Indian woman with dementia. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I was an indie developer, and then in 2019, I moved to Malmö in Sweden to join Ubisoft Massive as a narrative designer there. Um, and in 2018, so the other part of the introduction you gave me, um, we founded Pock in Play, um, which is an organization um, focused on um, improving and increasing the visibility and the representation of people in color, um, both in games and in the games industry. Very cool. Yeah, obviously representation in games, something that's very important to me, very important to a lot of our audience. Mm -hmm. So um, I, it's, it's like, um, if anyone's gonna like reach out to other black people for Black History Month, I wanna be the one to do it and not like, I, yeah. <laughs> I think that's gonna have a different, <laughs> that's gonna have a different vibe. Um, so yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I first uh, became aware of Pock and Play just from a hashtag on Twitter of just mm. people just say like, hey, it's me, this is what I yeah. do. Um, and I got on, on board that because I'm, I'm definitely here, I'm definitely doing things. Um, so yeah, just, I guess, just some more, um, so you said 2018 yeah. when that was founded? Okay, so mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, just some more, some more background on how that all kind of came to be and just maybe who else was involved okay. and sort of the impetus behind it. 
Yeah, so my co-founder is um, an amazing human being called Adam Campbell. And um, we met um, through other sort of diversity work and we were kind of frustrated with the lack of progress. So um, we decided to form an organization that would um, allow us to kind of create a team of people who um, were on the sort of same wavelength as us and sort of had a similar idea towards um, strategies, like how to, you know, um, implement strategies that would mean that we could actually um, hopefully make a difference. And um, yeah, so in, I guess in 2017, we were talk started talking about that and um, we approached um there's gail and um yeah or sitar you know we have you can look on the pock and play website and we have now we have a team of i think there's nine of us all together um but yeah sort of uh, mike anderson and des um was sort of there from the early days and jade and yeah just everyone's been really great so we sort of assembled this great team of people and launched in 2018 and we started by um, hosting events and um, us two games, uh, the studio in London were really great and super supportive right that's, from the beginning. That's the, uh, the Monument Valley people. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. Game. yeah. So Mike works at um, us too and um, sort of asked his boss, you know, we've got this organization and we need somewhere, we want to host events. And um, they opened up the studio for us, you know, once a month. So we started by being a sort of uh, networking facilitator, I suppose. Okay. And um, the thing that we wanted to do was, we felt it was important to be able to reach beyond games, who people, so it wasn't just about connecting people of color who were already in games. We wanted to make sure that we could reach beyond that. So if it was people who were games adjacent or had nothing to do with games, so, you know, we had people at our events who, I don't know, worked in banking but were kind of interested in the sector or right because game, really... gaming can get feel so insular at times you know exactly. it's, it's, it's really such yeah. an appeal to, to you know darn right. everyone yeah right exactly and so you know there's people who are working in jobs who don't even know how to get into games or that there's jobs what the jobs are that they could get to in the industry so we thought it was really important that we didn't say you have to already be in games to sort of qualify to, you know, come to our events. Right. Um, so we had people who worked for like local councils and people who worked in all sorts of people who were students, you know, who were still at school, but, you know, they were making games in their spare time. So that makes them game developers as far as I'm concerned. And um, so, uh, yeah, so we, um, had quite open events and we found that there was a real hunger people wanted to meet up and find each other and you know so uh, we sort of grew a really great community that way and um, yeah we'd have speakers and um, each month and uh, we were also sort of conscious of the fact that the UK games industry um, is very London centric um uh but there are studios and obviously there are people there's talent all over the country um so we wanted to um first thing help people get to our events in london um so us two gave us a bursary to help people travel to the event who can otherwise come so that was really great um so we had people come from Scotland, we had someone come from Berlin who, um, yeah, who used the bursary to come from Berlin, which was really great. And then um, last year we hosted our first event that was outside London. It was in the north of England, which um, gave people access um, without needing to travel to London at all, which was really great. And of course then um, the <laughs> pandemic happened. So. Right. <laughs> Not so, so much, uh, not so much physical traveling, huh? Right, exactly. So not so, uh, yeah. So um, events were off the cards then, and in the over the last year, actually not having to manage and constantly schedule those events and and speakers means that we've been able to um, 
build the sort of infrastructure of the organizations the sort of establish our status as you know sort of not-for-profit status and things like that and um, set things up so that we can stay, take um, all the um, sort of generous donations that people who want to help the organization and really kind of plan what we want to do and sort of put strategies together and things like that so in some ways although we haven't been able to have those really great um, social events we are energy because you know we're all doing this as volunteers alongside our jobs um, so um, I think we found that our energy could be put into things that are much more um, impactful um, as great as the social events were and I think when things do open up again we'll still have the social events but probably not as often as we did not every month maybe once a quarter or something instead um it, it also so sounds like you're can, kind of putting yourself in a position to just have a larger kind of international presence um yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah um definitely uh that's and just being able to do initiatives you know, we have plans for initiatives like stock photography of um black game developers and players and you know people of color um, in studios and um and uh at um, sort of game conventions and things like that, so that marketing people and media have stock photography that Im includes people of color um, as opposed to you know the the average um, white beardy guy. I want to say, yes, you know, the, the international aspect of this, I find uh, really cool and inspiring because, yeah, it, things can just, I mean, I'm, I'm here in New York and I just see you how, how um, American centric things can be uh, mm -hmm. in, in all sorts of industries. But I wanted to ask, did you did you see kind of a renewed uh, just interest in like partnerships or just people just just curious to kind of get involved, like in the wake of here in America, all the, 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 you know, the police protests uh, after the George Floyd murder, murders? Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah, we definitely had renewed um, interest. I mean, we always had interest and support, but there was definitely a marked um, I guess like sincerity. Okay. Um, you know, people would always say, you know, maybe companies would before come to us saying, oh, we've got a job, can you help us reach your um, reach your network um because we don't know how to reach out to people who aren't white men to apply for our jobs or something mm -hmm. um but um since you know the sort of george floyd and the black lives matter um movement we've had much more yeah i would just say sincere sort of like and thoughtful approaches to us um sort of recognizing the emotional labor that we are putting in and sort of you know sort of some people coming with plans that you know they might be able to um uh implement for us that you know that we can that will help us um yeah so it has been really great and heartwarming um yeah so something positive has got to come from that surely that, that kind of that kind of rolls into i guess what's going to be my, my kind of last question here a very uh, very not at all heavy question um but um so so you so you see that that's kind of been like a shift then it's a it's they've been more sincere more thoughtful that's that sounds like an improvement over you know where it's it's been in the past do you see in, in general do you think things are improving even just like a little bit if they're not, that's also fine. That's yeah. keep it entirely real. I mean, I find, <laughs> yeah, I guess 2020, um, 2020 was brutal. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it was like, um, for black people particularly, it was just brutal. It was just unrelenting um and so i go into 2021 with cautiously um because you know you you think you know like i i feel stupid now but you know i thought 
Black Panther was the beginning of a, a wave of cultural, a cultural shift, mm. but it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, like people liked it and, you know, so, you know, thought it was, but nothing really changed. Um, you know, by the end of that year, so Black Panther came out in, in, um, in February and by July, I was already like, oh, okay, nothing's changed. Um, and so, you know, I found my optimism just, uh, comes back to haunt me, you know, I, I guess mm -hmm. like, no, yeah, yeah, in yeah. my face. So like, yes, there are people who are more interested, but I want to know that they're going to be interested in two years time. Um, when there's not a pandemic, then what happened? You know, it's, um, because, you know, it's like the people who, are interested in us for Black History Month or because something terrible has happened to somebody and they feel mm -hmm. guilty or whatever. But I want, I want sustainable long-term change. That's what I want to see. That's why we created Pock in Play because it's, it's not a hashtag. <laughs> um, you know, it's our lives, it's our lived experience. and. Um, yeah, so I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, I try to be, we have to be optimistic, right? <laughs> right, you can't, um, yeah. Because otherwise, like, cause otherwise there's on. no, why bother ever doing anything? Right, like, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's know, someone it's very like, involved in the labor movement, I very much feel that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Sometimes I feel like there's change. I guess, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, because there's one step forward and, yeah some steps back and then well, hopefully. I, I applaud you for very much being active and trying to make that change. Um, and if our, our viewers want to learn more and or get involved, uh, where, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, well, we're at Pock and Play on Twitter and um, we have what you'll find all our places that we have a website. So um, we also have a discord site. So if you find us on Twitter, we've just opened our discord. So um, you can apply to be part of our community there, um, seeing as we can't meet physically now. Um, you know, it's a really great way to make links um, globally. Now that we have the hashtag I am Pock and Play, um, we wanted to create a space where we can all be together and talk. Cool. And all right. So maybe, maybe we'll loop up a year from now and then see if we're feeling yes. any more optimistic. Yes. Let's uh, hope we are. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, Shell Ramanan, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. This was fantastic. Thank you. Um, Thanks so much. Thanks. And we'll, we'll see you next time.